Howdy hackers and welcome to yet another episode of Fairlight TV. This time we will have a look at one of those brilliant programs that get a little bit too little uh, appreciation by the community. This is really something you should take a look at. Now we're about to take a look at C64 Debugger. Uh, super talented Polish guy has taken the core of Vice and made it into something which is still using Vice as a core, but there is so much more if you want to see the C64 program running and if you want to understand the inner workings of uh, a running C64 program, which is very handy for when you are uh, exploring where you should apply any patches to it for reasons uh, that might be obvious to you. Obvious to you. Please have a look at the rest of this to see where you can use this for your own projects. Stay tuned. Okay, so now we have the beneficial situation of a program running and you don't see my screen overlapping any of the content because this is a rather condensed view and I don't want to steal any screen estate by showing me. I don't really contribute much to the visuals here. Okay, so what you see here is one of the screens that you can show on uh, C64 Debugger. Uh, so up in the top right corner, you see the program counter, uh, A register and Y register and X register, a stack pointer, zero one is the memory map. Yeah, and all the parameters for the CPU, they, because everything is running at normal speed, they don't really make any, any sort of sense to you. But if you stop the program running, then of course you want to see this, because it's relevant what the, uh, these parameters are when you're stopping a program at, uh, running program. Uh, this is the running assembly on the left. The, this here is the visuals of the memory map. Um, so what this does, it's painting um, something blue, which is red. Uh, it's painting it pink if it's written, and it's painting it white uh, if it's executed. Uh, and then normal hex dump, uh, dump of memory in uh, sort of text format, and then two graphical formats. Yeah, might be relevant, especially when you see that you're scrolling through uh, the memory and you see where the font is by this, but there are better better tools for that. So think of it like, like cosmetics here. And uh, so let's press F7. And what I have here is the C64. Uh, yes, that was not very good. Okay. <laughs> That was a bit of a mishap. If you configure the same keys in OBS as you're using in uh, in the emulator, they could collide. That's not so very good. But now we should look at the C64 debugger's internals. And for do for doing that, if you want to do that properly, I guess we need to run some sort of program. Otherwise, we don't have a running program to look into. So dark catacombs. And since I don't want to uh, have competing sounds. I will run this in the fast mode, which means that uh, there will be no sound. So this is running a, C uh, a Fairlight intro. This is So this is the Alchemist intro that we applied on the Dark Catacombs. So what you should remember here is that there are super many key presses and they are really, well, difficult to remember. And sometimes you find yourself just pressing randomly and hoping for achieving a result. But uh, so the, the first main key is F9. That gives you this menu. So this is where you configure stuff. You allocate uh, screen uh, disks to the, uh, to the running instance. And uh, well, and if you want to read what was the short key for uh, reload and for hard reset and soft reset and all that. The next thing you should remember is F10 being pause and then running uh, running the program uh, one instruction at a time. So basically single stepping. And then F11 for running it again. I don't think F12 does anything. Uh, then pressing the number keys uh, would give you, or pressing the uh, control number keys would give you uh, um, access to a number of save slots. 
So you can save a number of slots from for every, any running program. If you want to go back in time, that's a very handy way. There is a another kind of where it does that automatically, and you can you can basically re rewind time, so you can look like what happened three seconds ago. I don't use that. It uses uh, rather much memory and it uses much CPU and uh, and I think I have rather much control of where the program is running. I add breakpoints and all of that. So so uh, I don't use that. So the, but control numbers is the way to access that. So when setting the uh, the different scenes, so the number of information panels are sort of conf not configurable, it's configurable by the programmer, and he has done a number of presets uh, depending on what kind of, of information you want to see. So control F1 shows the, the regular screen. On that one you can press right, uh, right, right, right mouse button, and so this follows where the raster beam is pointing. For me this is just, I, I turn seasick from this. And then you have showing the screen what it's, but it's it's showing the screen with the um, the characters outline, so you see what is in what character, and then it's, it's not updating uh, only per the raster beam. It, you are seeing the screen as it looks in every particular instance. I don't know if that made any sort of sense, but we will go through one of the other menus and we will actually see where this is coming from. So control F2 is sort of the standard menu. On the left you have uh, a running disassembly of uh, the running program. This second block here uh, in the middle is the memory map. So what you see there is memory just presented uh, as it is. But the, the cool part is the color highlighting. Uh, you don't see much here, but white a white dot eventually fading to dark gray is when something is executed. Pink eventually turning to some sort of darker pink is when memory is written to. Uh, and then uh, blue is when memory is read. So, you can actually see where the where the CPU is messing with the memory at any given time, especially when you do. Um, I can show that because that's actually really nice to look at. When you see decrunching of a program, so here you see loading. It's reading and writing, and now it's depacking. So depacking means you read from somewhere and you write it to some other place in a depacked format. Uh, yeah, okay, so here, uh, so the F1 option of pressing the uh, right, right clicking on the screen will give you the three options. So this is the normal option, this is what, what the screen is supposed to look like and what normal users would see unless they fiddle with it. So F3 gives you a number of options here, uh, Char set is there, uh, the uh, screen memory is there, and uh, this is the what kind of border format. You see this toggling between 40 and 38. That's what it's doing on the row that is scrolling. You, you do down to 38 and then you can scroll and then you can have it to 40 to show uh, the full screen again. Yeah, let's... Uh, if you're messing with the disk drive, uh, here you have the running computer and on the right uh, you have the running disk drive and as you can see the disk drive is basically waiting for some sort of input. It's just uh, pulling one line of the of the VI chip. Again the same memory map here on the left and the memory map on the on the disk drive on the right. Um, I, I should show you directly the memory map here because you can actually zoom. Now I'm using the, the wheel on my mouse here to scroll in or zoom in. Um, especially when you zoom in and you can press the right mouse button to zoom, uh, sorry, to, to kind of grab onto the surface and then drag it around. And then we can try. Hmm. That one is actually not showing the memory. Let's go back to this one, because this one works a bit differently. No, it didn't. 
Okay. When you do this normally, uh, and I don't know why it's not doing this now, you should see the memory uh, content of that cell. Okay, so FM here, uh, VIC information, SID information, CIA1, CIA2. So these are inside the computer. And then you have VIA, VIA1 and VIA2. These are the timer chips inside the the disk drive and then you have frame and cycle and uh, and you can also tell that I'm running in, in warp mode. Was that F6? No, it was F5. So F6 is this super big memory map. I'm annoyed that I don't see what I expect to see here. Let's see what we have here. So D4. So this is seemingly the writes to the uh, sound chip. Um, you can see here the pink updates that it's writing to the sound chip. So that's music being played even if we don't hear it because we're running in warp mode. Uh, yeah, what could that be? So these these are the uh, the VIC chip changes. Okay, F7. Yeah, again, this is also disk drive mode. Uh, it adds very little value compared to the previous one but this is not seeing it from a memory view perspective rather it, it sees from the chip that talks to the other chip so when communication happens in the disk drive it's CIA2 talking to VIA1 in the disk drive then uh, F7 that was and then F8 that gives you access to the machine code monitor and here you can select between the default monitor and the vice monitor it's not like the full vice monitor. There are restrictions to it, but uh, yeah, uh, we're not going to the details. I'm just sort of exploring enough for you to uh, have some sort of map of where you should go to, to explore this more. But if you thought that the control and F1 to F8 were the only ones you could press, that's not really true because there is control shift. This one is actually quite useless. It's the same as control F1. Uh, so control shift F1 and control F1 is the same, only like you, it has pressed the right button once. So, uh, and you can't cycle in here seemingly. Okay, now here you would have uh, another one. Um, F3 is this, F4 is this. Uh, control shift f4 control shift f5 and this is one of the really magical ones uh, i don't know if you can see the crosshair down in the in the lower part but this is think of it like displaying the screen as it looked at a particular raster point so the raster beam is drawing the screen and using fancy stuff like the raster interrupts and all of that you change a number of the um, system settings or, or like vic register uh, and then that effect will affect the screen estate until you change it to something else like if you change the border color at a particular raster line and then change it again at another raster line you would see a raster bar but here you would see the the color of the of the of the background as it was when you point to that particular raster position this is just sheer magic here seemingly we are changing the background color to uh, to white and then i'm like scrolling a bit down oh yeah yeah when all is text it doesn't really show the full potential of this but if you are inside a game which has segments of bitmap and segments of text and what have you not this is truly amazing but you can also see here uh, the general view that you have a screen on FC100 and then uh, you have the char set on F8100. Uh, uh, and yeah, those parameters. I really encourage you to look into this. And F8 is, here you see <laughs> the music being played. So the, you don't hear it because we're running again in warp mode. But this is showing on the piano, the music playing. 
and I guess here each of the channels represent uh, green, red, or blue. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah, here is actually another menu as well. Uh, no, where is that one? Oh yeah, I think I skipped. So I was on this one, and then here on uh, Control Shift F7, you have a full editor, a, a full screen editor. So you can start like po poking like weird characters here. You select the character you want there, and then you place it on the screen like so. Yeah, you can do whatever you want with that. Uh, here is something showing the respective screens. So this is the 64 screens, uh, theoretical 64 screens in the memory. Uh, and again, that was the music playing. Okay, so that was... Uh, C64 debugger in a very very brief mode mode or, or fashion. I would like to encourage you to take a look and poke around with it and drop any program on it and see it run and uh, and fiddle with what you can do with it. It's absolutely amazing. Thanks for watching and uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Subscribe, like, bell button. Yeah, you know the drill. See you in the next episode.